Hello everyone and welcome back here to Comic Vantage and today I have another very special eBay grab bag episode. I guess it was about a month ago I got one of these in. It was a hundred bucks. I paid 60 bucks for it. It was $45, $15 shipping and everyone had so much fun with it including myself opening that box. The books in it were just, they were a blast. It was just such a great time. And it's become one of my most watched videos of the last couple of months. And uh, I put it up to everyone. I said, hey, did you have fun with this? Do you want me to get another one? And everybody's like, yeah, just do it. <laughs> so this has been sitting around now. When did I get this in? I got this in the middle of last month. So I guess it's been about two months since I did one of these. Oh, and I could not wait to tear into it. It's probably one of my uh, most impatient times. Usually I have a great time just waiting. You know, I put a package in a closet and wait four years to open it. This one here, just because it was so much fun. So we're going to crack this bad boy open. Oh, just like the last one though, we have styrofoam peanuts. <laughs> we love styrofoam peanuts. So, and while you guys are sitting here waiting for me to open this, don't forget to uh, gently press that like button for me, since I know you guys dug the last video, you're going to dig this one as well. And, uh, and if you're not sub to the channel, make sure you step me on up. It doesn't cost anything. And for you, and for you, pennies a day, and support Tom Advantage. Oh, here we go. It's so good. Also, if you're so inclined, you can check out my perks for becoming a channel member and even stop over at comicvantage.com and check out some of my awesome stuff. I have many exclusives coming out this year. I also sell mystery boxes and my own brand of comic book bags. Ugh. Oh, the one thing I did not like about the box, styrofoam and peanuts. Ugh, they're stuck to my hands. Tear all these out. This is the easy part. <laughs> right away, I see Batman Nightfall in the back there. It's funny, I think I mentioned before how back in the 90s, a lot of places were selling grab bags because comic books were being printed by the millions. Uh, so there was lots of overstock. You could walk into places like Walmart and grab packs of comics so cheap. And you could always, always, always guarantee three things in those boxes. First thing, they would always have a spawn number one in them. <laughs> the second thing, there would always be X-Men number one in them. <laughs> and number three there would always be some kind of Nightfall comic in them as well. All right. Oh, look at that. As soon as I pulled that open. See that? So good. Now, the last round of comics that we got, we got some older stuff in there. I mean, the stuff was like 80s and 90s. I'm just doing a quick skim. It looks like I might have some newer stuff in here. So this might not be as fun as the last one, but still we should have a blast. Because seriously, first off, right out of the bat, we got the DC vs. Marvel issue number four. And this led into the Amalgam universe where everybody smashed together and we got characters like Dark Claw. So that was pretty cool. All right, I need to move my coffee out of the way. It's going to be in the line of fire for placing comic books down. Mm -hmm. Rogue, issue number two. It's actually a pretty gorgeous cover. I've never seen that before. I want to move you up here a little bit so you guys can get a better view as well. I said this is 100 books, and it ran me 60 bucks. Now that is something you don't see every day. The Saga of Ra's al Ghul, issue number three in a four-issue miniseries. Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams. Man, that's a combo right there, isn't it? It's so cool. This book looks like it's backwards. That's a... I 
1995. Let's see, what are you? Possibly a Dark Horse comic. Because it looks like it's a Dark Horse on the back end. Star Wars Tales from Mose Eisley. No joke. Okay, that's pretty awesome. I did not see that one coming. Man, we've got this nice little corner crunch here, but I'll throw that in the press. <laughs> Tales from Moe's Eisley. There's no number on it, so it's a, it'd be a no-number-ish comic. Probably a one-shot. From 1995. Wow. Okay, that's exciting. I dig that a lot. I'm actually going to pop that in the back there so everybody can keep an eye on it. All right, next up. Spider-Man Ghost Rider, The Motor Storm. Looks like it's another one shot because we have no number on it. Hey, speaking of Spawn, look at this. Curse of Spawn issue number four. And we also got the Curse of Spawn issue number three. These were amazing covers, so cool. Wow. All right. We got more stuck together here. Spawn the Dark Ages, issue number 17. And while we're at it, let's throw a Curse of Spawn issue number six on there. Man, the amount of detail that they used to put into these books back in the 90s. Absolutely insane. The only artist that still really draws like this is David Finch. That guy's line work is just crazy. All right. What else do we got here? We got Batman Riddler. Run, Riddler, run. Run, Riddler. This is number two of three. I've actually never heard of this book. Red Trinity Flash, issue number seven. Man, we got some awesome, crazy, all over the place titles. And I'm screwing up here. I'm sorry, people. I gotta hit my camera. Oh, you know what? I just saw this. I got to pull it out. I'm sorry. I saw the autograph. <clears throat> Not the autograph. I saw this thing that you're on it. Spider-Man Human Torch, issue number one of five. But this is the Paul Michael Smith cover. That is one of my favorite artists of all time right there is Paul Michael Smith. Now, I'm not quite sure the whole story behind it, but back in the 80s or so, he was drawing X-Men, and this guy was, his artwork was just being, it just, it was blowing up. Everybody really, really enjoyed it. And he was really slated to be one of the, you know, superstars, artists, but I guess he had some personal problems or something. Ended up leaving comics for a very long time. I don't know the whole story behind it, but I would like to hear it. Death of Innocence, the horror of landmines. Also, Dennis O'Neill. Oh, Bill Sienkiewicz, too. Oh, man, another one of my favorite artists right there. Wow, that is crazy. Issue number one from 1996. I was just fresh out of high school. <laughs> X-Force number two. Oh, the annual number two with new character trading cards inside. This is still bagged in here. That's pretty awesome. A Tony Daniel cover. Wow, it must be a young Tony Daniel cover because he signed it A. Daniel when he was going by Anthony Daniel. G.I. Joe Transformers from Image, issue number four. That is awesome right there. You know, one of my biggest regrets in life is uh, the G.I. Joe Transformers crossover. That was illustrated by Jay Lee. One year at Comic-Con, I actually ran across him and at his table, he had a bunch of artwork and I ended up buying a panel or, you know, a page, or original artwork of G.I. Joe versus Transformers. Absolutely beautiful. Had a Cobra Commander in it and had a Shockwave in it. I paid like 75 bucks for it and it's long gone. Wow, I wish I still had that. <laughs> G.I. Joe, a real American hero, issue number 14, also from Image Comics. I guess they got the license for a while. I had no idea. Probably about the time I was getting out of comics before I picked it back up. Oh, speaking of Jay Lee, we have the Imperfects, issue number one of six. Awesome Jay Lee cover. 
And again, another one of my favorite artists, but I'm more partial to his 90s work, where it was just dark and gritty and angular, and everybody was like really stylized. Okay. The Incredible Hulk flashback, minus one. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. I have never seen nor heard of this ever. It is the minus one issue. All right, if anybody could tell me anything about this, please let me know, because we got Stan the Man Lee up top there. Hey, more G.I. Joe from Image, issue number three. And we got Frontline, issue number one. Look at that. Groovy, I really like those. Okay, next up, the Red and Stimpy Show from Marvel, issue number 41. Oh, yeah, Marvel did a lot of these crazy kind of cartoon books uh, back in the 90s. <laughs> That's actually, that takes me back. What are you? Adventure Comics, issue number one from DC from May of 1999. I got a Dave Johnson cover. The Adam and Star Man. Hmm. Wow, no clue on that one. I've never seen it, but wow, it's a serious throwback. Hey, now we're getting into some oldies here. Like I said, this, this grab bag is just all over the place. You just don't know what is going to be in here. The Defenders, issue number 56, from February of 1977. That is pretty awesome. Is that ROM down there? Kind of looks like ROM, but it's not. Wow. Gotta love stumbling across old books like that. It's really, it's just history. I, mean, I have no interest in collecting them, but they're just cool to see. Digimon. <laughs> Seriously. I don't know. You have no idea what you're going to pull out of this thing. Digital Monsters, issue number four. I gotta say, I did watch Digimon back in the 90s. All right. Batman, Two-Face Strikes. There are two copies in there. I was wondering why that was so thick. See that? Just jam two books in there. Two-Face Strikes Twice. Book two, part two, two copies. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have way too much fun with this. Come on there. All right, getting a little bit more modern now. Fantastic Four. Fifth Wheel, part one of two, issue number 501. We got issue number 505. Issue number 506. Looks like a nice little run here because here's 502. And 490. 499. How many of these we're going to have? 495. 496. Wow, yeah, that was a whole nice big run there. Crazy. Because then we're going to jump into the Marvel Knights. Issue number seven. Issue number six. Issue number five. That's a Steve McNiven cover. I really love McNiven artwork. I mean, this is just one of those guys that he just, he has it, you know? It's so good. It's like he did the interior work on all these guys as well. Another Fantastic Four. The future must be avoided at all costs. No idea what you are. 2010, number 574. All right, I think that might be the last of our... Yep, I think it's the last of them. But we do have... In Human's Realm of Kings, issue number five of five. Issue number four of five. And three of five. That's a beautiful cover. No idea who the cover artist is, but those are gorgeous. All right. Now let's get back to some Cartoon Network. The Cartoon Network Action Pack <laughs> with its Samurai Jack. Juniper Lee and, oh, codename Kids Next Door. 
All right, I'm just gonna just leave that there for a while. <laughs> Warlord, what? Bart Sears. I love Bart Sears artwork. I had no idea they remade a Warlord series. This is 2006, it's pretty recent. Yeah, I am totally at a loss there. That's pretty cool. Vamps. Pumpkin time. <laughs> Again, I had no idea. I have never heard of that, but it is issue number one of three. I kind of dig that cover, so I will actually give that a read. It's Vertigo, so suggested for mature readers. I love Vertigo comics. You want to put that aside so I make sure I read that. Blood Strike, issue number five. Now this is 90s image right here. Gotta love it. Jeff Matsuda. It's weird, you know, back then, uh, Rob Liefeld was just putting out, he was just creating tons of teams and characters and just putting out a whole ton of books. And he would do like the first issue and then pass it on to another team to continue it. I think it was a great business strategy. He can crank out a ton of books and only have to worry about the first couple issues and then sort of pass it on. Ryan, the Future Force. This is some Valiant from the 90s right here. Issue number nine. Also, we got a gatefold cover. Uh oh, look at that. I don't think that was very necessary for a gatefold cover, but hey, it's a gatefold cover nonetheless. There we go. Any Shrek fans out there? Good old Shrek and Donkey for you. <laughs> Issue number three of Shrek. Uh, Infinite Crisis Special, The Day of Vengeance. Issue number one. Tales of the Vampire from the creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So it's a Joss Whedon book. We got more as well. So we got three, issue two, and issue one. We got a nice little run right there. That is very cool. I'll have to give those a read. All right, what do we got next? We got Siege, issue number 608, Thor, or Thor 608 with Siege. But then we also got Dark Wolverine with this whole Siege thing, issue number 84. And the Avengers Initiative, number 34. Looks like we got a little Siege crossover here. And then the New Avengers, issue number 63 with the Siege tie-in. So we got the whole little Siege thing going on. And then we have Siege Cabal tie-in from the Avengers Initiative, number 31. The Marvel's Project. Human Torch versus Namor there. That is pretty neat. I dig that. Daredevil, the man without fear, number 507. Looks like we got a little bit more Daredevil going on here, but this is Shadowland, issue number two of five, along with Shadowland, number three of five. A Daredevil, another Siege tie-in, 503. 504, more Shadowlands with 512. How many of these do we have? Oh. 511. Oh, looks like we're gonna put that to the side. It's getting a little too heavy. Cause then we bust out with the 510 and the 509. Very cool. Nice little daredevil run right there. Heroes for Hire, issue number two. That's pretty awesome. Great cover. And then we get into Preacher. Issue number 59. This is a series I have always wanted to read and never got... What? Did this come out of... The... I think this actually might have been shipped in the UK. Look at that. I mean, it's not a UK variant or anything, but it might have made it over there and came back. 
But Preacher is always a series I wanted to read. I really need to get to it. I watched the TV series and absolutely had a blast with it. But I would like to see the differences. Hey, more Shadowlands after the fall. Issue number one. One shot. We are getting down to the wire here. Looks like we're about two-thirds through. Spider-Man Human Torch, issue number three. <laughs> and we've got the Spider Buggy. <laughs> Another Paul Michael Smith cover. Oh, that's that's too much fun. All right, more Spider-Man Human Torch. Another Paul Michael Smith cover. So what do we got? We got three and four. I thought I saw issue number two was the other one. Wow, look at this. Now, if that doesn't scream 90s, I don't know what does. Reign of the Superman, Superman number 82. Back for good. That is a chromium cover, people. I had no idea DC did any kinds of chromium covers. <laughs> oh, this is so amazing. I'm so excited because of a chromium cover. I mean, it's not even because it's Superman. I don't even like Superman. But look at that. They put this nice sheet of silver, and then they kind of embossed it, added the color, and then put a sheet of plastic on top to give you this beautiful chromium effect that is just too much fun oh man <laughs> also coming out of the 90s no 90s collection was complete without a night thrasher issue number one. Oh yeah that just screams 90s as well and look at the holofoil oh that's so good <laughs> you know, this should be the next book that people Darkhawk. Oh, Superman. I'm still laughing about that. Superman, Man of Steel. And this is issue number three from the Elseworlds, an annual. The Mike Mignola cover. Mike Mignola of Hellboy fame. All right, we got some more Siege with the Dark Avengers. Number 15, we're just going to pass over that because this is that book that had the Nightfall on the back. DC Universe variant. Are you kidding me? Okay, that's a little crazy. Now, these are supposed to be a little harder to find. Now, I don't think this one is worth much of anything. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this usually goes on for about 10 bucks on eBay, but still, that is awesome to find in this box. That is just way too cool. Let's just pop that over there with that bad boy. I just get a nice little collection. All right, Superman Action Comics issue number... 16 or actually 1993 16 it's just like legacy numbering and then 688 up here in the corner hmm. spy stirred supergirl in action comics 686 supergirl's kind of weird looking all right guys we're fighting back here all right, next we've got Superbad in Action Comics, issue number zero. And I don't know if you guys see the nice metallic kind of coloring up here. This is just way too much fun. Okay, now this next book is an absolute bit of awesome. Action Comics 684, Doomsday finally reaches Metropolis. Man, like I said, you never know what you're going to find in these grab bags. This is way too cool. Wow. Okay, this is just so much fun. Like I said, it's not a real big major key, but it's definitely a minor. Let's see what we got next. Green Lantern, issue number 20 from January of 1992. Where do I sign up? We got more action comics, six ninety nine. This means war. You know, I need to put this over here. We're just gonna line those up. It's so weird. I'm putting a line of DC comics. I'm not even a DC fan. 
Superman in Action Comics, issue number 692. It's kind of an iconic cover. Action Comics Weekly featuring Phantom Lady from six, this is issue number 639. Let's see what else we got here. Another Action Comics Weekly, issue number 601. 48 pages every week. All right. Looks like we're out of the action comics now. We're on to Young Justice. Supergirl meets Young Justice, issue number 13. Young Justice number 11. And Young Justice, issue number 14, Day of Judgment. Secret Invasion, The Almighty Avengers, issue number 18. And this box did not disappoint again. This was been so much fun. I actually don't want it to be over. You can kind of see, though, that there's like newer books and then some older ones by the color of the backboards in here. So we'll keep them in that direction so I can't see what they are. What are you? Let's see, Captain America and the Mighty Avengers, issue number three. That's kind of like a, this is a homage cover to, I don't know if I think X-Men, wasn't it? Let me know in the comments down below. Vigilante, issue number five of six. Oh, I thought it was going to be a Vigilante run, but it's not. We have Vermilion from DC Helix Comics from 1996, issue number one. I've never heard of Helix Comics. If you guys know what this is, let me know. And then we got Vermilion, issue number 12. Vermilion, issue number four. I think I need to give these a read. Vermilion, issue number five. So we got a Vermilion run going on. Vermilion, issue number six. Vermilion, issue number seven. Really? It's like, a, is this a whole run? Vermilion issue number 10. And number 11. I think that's it. All right, only two books left. What will they be? <laughs> Vermilion issue number 12. And I think the last book is Vermilion. Nope, the last book is Human Target issue number one of four. Wow, this box has just been so much fun. From back in the 70s, clear up to 2010, all different kinds of books. Some 90s nostalgia, some little mini keys. This is just DC Universe exclusive or uh, variants. So much fun. Absolutely so much fun. This has been a blast. If you guys like this video, let me know down in the comments below. If you want me to grab another one, I will do it. Just give me the heads up. Let me know you liked it, and I will get to the seller and say, hey, hook me up again. Mm -hmm. Like always, guys, my subscribers, you are awesome. Love you to death. To my channel supporters, your names are scrolling right here with a huge thank you. And like always, guys, thanks for watching and take it easy.